Welcome in. So today I'm going to teach you how to play the Cavaliers snare break from 2023. It's the one with the Casey claw and it goes just like this. So we're going to get to the claw right at the very end. We've got a lot of stuff to get to before that. It's in 5-4. Might mean it take a little bit longer for you to kind of get it in your head. Bear with me though. Keep going. Don't give up. You'll get this down. First thing we start off with, we've got these little columns here, right? All we're doing is we're putting our sticks up like this. We're holding it full fist and we're playing this. I hold them quite tight because if they're loose, they'll move. And we're just playing, uh, playing left hand lead. One e under two. Most of the time people do it pretty straight. I think Cavalier is a little bit more like this, but you take your pick, all right? So next thing, we've got a new rudiment here, right? It sounds like this. Now I've never done those before, before I've done this, and I imagine some of you hadn't, so I'm gonna show you real quick. Play a paradiddle, paradiddle, paradiddle. Now play the diddles loud. Paradiddle, 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 paradiddle. Now diddle the first two notes. Now that, you've gotta get that quite well, because there's a, another little catch, and they're in triplets, right? So if you've never done those before, like I hadn't, do like a thousand now and get used to it. Take the speed up. Now if you look at the notation, you can see that what we've got is we've got... If I can't get in your head, take the diddles out. One and a two and a three and a four. Next part, next six notes, we get one of these. But there's some diddles in there. And that last accent can throw you off a little bit too, right? So those parts together is quite an important part. Next bar, right, we've got this little buzz thing going on. The pattern itself isn't too bad because it's just right, right, left, left. And then a little, like a, basically the start of a hair tip, but left-handed. So. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, and a one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one. So play that to start with. And then start to figure out the. Now that little buzz is more of a press than a, a big buzz, right? We haven't got time for a buzz. If you can't get that to begin with, just take it out. And practice those separately. So I'll put the Met on. We're going to go pretty slow, right? We're going to take it way down. What's it at? 112, right? We'll take the whole of that section down at one tap. If I play it once and talk with you, and then we'll do it right. So we're going to get this. Then the, the new Rudman, then the, we're going to end there, right? So one, two, three, four. Okay, I rush a bit. Three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Last time, three, four. Start the next line. We start with paradiddle diddles, right? Most people can do those pretty quickly. What's interesting about this one is they've offset it. So instead of going paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, we're actually going diddle paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle. So it's coming in on that kind of that upbeat, right? So we count to six, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So that pattern, I'll do with a met. So it's gonna be pretty quick. 
two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. There's only two of them, so it's going to go. And. And. Still quite difficult, right? Now, if you remember the line before, we ended with that. That's actually a start. That part. So they kind of link, right? So it's going to feel more like a left-handed paradiddle. Um, what will it be? And a right-handed paradiddle diddle. And then another right-handed paradiddle stop, right? But that part is going to be sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, stop. Right, next bit, we're into all this. This pattern. It's kind of fake Swiss Army triplets, all right? Because I say fake because they're kind of offset. So the actual rudiment is a double right, quiet, a loud left, and a loud right flam. So it's going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but we're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one and 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 two, three. One of the strange bits about this bit, because it's in five four, it's easy to get lost where you are here. This is where they do this kind of look at each other thing. But the way I do it is I just count to five. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five. And that's the start of the next bit. One, two, three, four, five. Now that leads in with the flat. So it's actually going oh, one, two, three, four, five. So which is actually Swiss Army Trippers, isn't it? But we're bringing that left up. One, two, three, four, five. Now that pattern, I want to make sure I'm teaching this right. One, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'll end with the flamin' and down. One, two, three, four, five. Three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Now the next part is a, basically a six. One, two, three, four, five, six, stop. But we've got to start this the same way, which goes. I feel like, and then, quite hard playing it slow, I lose my way. Well, I think we should do that with the Met so that I know you understand it. So we've got, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Now that means if we try the whole line. Two, three, four, five. Be like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Second to the last line, right, this next part, we've got this, this going on. Starts off with fours, and then fours. So we want to get that big difference between the rights and the lefts. It's in triplets, worry about that in a minute. We've got just switching hands. Then we've got this pattern, it's quite an interesting, right? We've got kind of just dropping lots of rights in. But there's physically four of them. One, two, three, four. And then two left handed flams. One, two, three, four, left, left. One, two, three, four, left, left. One, two, three, four, left, left. If you forget the timing, that's what you're playing. One, two, three, four, left, left. One, two, three, four, left, left. One, two, three, four, left, left. Again, if you forget the time, we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, left, left. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, left, left. Now the timing is important though. Two, three, four. Three, four. And I put triplets under happier. Yeah? So if this is noisy, it's a bit noisy in here, but three, four. Three, four.
I can't take the triplets, right? So the next part joins to that, right? So really there's, there's three in a row, but you can see the start of the violin that goes into 4-4 four, four then goes. Now this part again for me was a strange part because I couldn't really think of a way of learning it other than just doing it enough times I heard the tune. Blah, 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 da, 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 gong. Da, 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 gong, or something like that. And there's a three, and we end with the butt end of the stick, all right? And I'll explain that to the classic corner here, right? So, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Right, hold that line. Here we go. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. I nearly lost it then. Three, four. Okay, so it's time for the claw, right? So the case of claw. So this concept is really quite a simple concept, right? You're hitting, you're holding the stick out in front of you like this, right? You're holding it for the, with a fist. You're hitting with the butt of the stick, and then you turn the stick to the left anti-clockwise and hit with the other end of the stick. So it's kind of this, right? That's the basics, but you can see it's much quicker than that, right? We got this thing going on. So what we've got to try and do is we've got to, first of all, we don't really play this angle. We're going to change the angle slightly, tipping it forward. And then the part of the drum that we're aiming for most of the time is actually back here and up here. So we can't really hit the middle with both of them, right? Unless we move our whole arm and we haven't really got time for that. So the other thing that you're gonna feel like, some people are gonna feel like, and you might see Cavaliers guys doing this, that this wrist might bend a little just to help you give you the, the leverage that you need. Now you don't want it all the way around like this, right? But it's a slight bend. Now you're gonna feel as also like a lot of the claw is coming from these two fingers here. Right? Now on a snare drum, we've got 14 inch snare drum, there's just enough room to do this, right? On a pad that's smaller, this is still a pretty big pad, this off world run, and it's still a little bit too small for me, right? You're gonna hear me catching this rim quite a lot. So realistically, this is something you're probably only going to do on a drum. If you've got a little Zymox or some other pad, you've probably got not, not much chance of playing this. But that's the motion that we're after there, right? If, you, if this isn't enough information for you, let me know. I might do another video just on how to play the Casey Clock. There's quite a few little tricks you can do, but that's the basics of it, right? So I'm kind of hitting across the drum and then the front. And I'm not getting a big hit. I'm just gliding across it, which is why there's all these scratch marks on my pad. Now, all we're going to do then is with our left hand, we're going to play the other diddle. Now, because the noise is a bit quieter here, a lot of drum lines then choose to then play the diddle instead of playing the middle, because then it'd go bada, 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 and be really loud. The left hand might also play these sections. So what I might get then is a more even roll. Now, this particular one that Cavaliers did is in triplets. So we're going one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, five triplet, one. So there's a little five triplet one at the end, all right? One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, five triplet, one. We've got to figure out how to do that with this. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, five triplet, one. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, five triplet, one. That wasn't a good one. And you got to try and get more, right? Difficult, right? If you're on tour, they're doing it every single day for the whole of the summer, you know, a little bit better chance of doing it than what we have right now, right? You can do it with the other hand. Right, but the Cavaliers choose to do it with the right. Right, so that particular pattern's gonna have to be even at 112. A bit too slow, actually. Three, four. Now this is the gold bit of information, right? This is where most people get this wrong because they've gone from playing some up straight into doing a claw and look where my hand is. It's not in the middle of the stick. What we actually have to do is we have to take a moment to sort of move up the stick. If I go too far, it screws it up. If I'm too low, it screws it up. You've got to get that sweet spot just in the right in the middle. Once you've found the sweet spot, maybe put a pencil line around there or get a bit of tape so you know just the right distance to make that happen. Now what they do is when they play that left, where we've been doing this, they kind of shift their hand. So, so the end, just in the right spot, right? That's your moment. 
change. So you set yourself up, alright, for that. Okay, let's see if we can get all the way through, right? It's quite difficult to play this slow, right? So if I screw up, I screw up, right? I do it again for you, right? But it's, it's the only way we're gonna learn. Learn it slow, 10,000 times, and just play it fast. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I screwed that roll because I held it too high, right? Gotta get that just right. It's quite slow, hard to do slow because I grabbed too high, right? I'm gonna go a little faster. So 130, still pretty slow, but we're getting up there. One, two, from the digger to get that. One, two, three, and. Just about got room at the end, but that's pretty good, right? So then they're doing it like insane, like 170, I think they do it out, right? We're gonna do 160, because I think that's a speed that's just nice, and I can probably demonstrate that reasonably well. So let's try it. Okay, 160. One, two. Nearly there, nearly there. Let's try that once more. One, two, one, two. So for me, the hardest part by far is the speed of those, um, those little parallels in there. I want to lift, and as soon as I lift, I get out of time, right? So keep those nice and low. Um, it'll keep you in time, all right? So I'd ask a favor of you guys. So 69% of you guys at the moment are subscribed to me, are unsubscribed to me, I should say. And you're watching my videos regularly, right? So it'll do me a massive favor. Please just hit the subscribe button. It helps me massively. It warrants me to do more of these videos. I see all your comments. So I'm looking at the comments for other videos to do. Keep giving me those. Let me know videos you'd like me to do. Let me know if you get all the way through this. Maybe go check out my books, check out the merch that's available in YouTube, underneath the t-shirts, bags, all sorts of things, and I'll see you in another lesson real soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again.